Uh-huh. I walk in there and I see the super jack guys in there. I'm like, yeah, my side's a little tight today, man. I'm gonna go over here and just hit the <laughs> treadmill. <laughs> I'm not gonna embarrass myself. <laughs> uh, you know, look. Uh, one thing. One thing I absolutely uh, have to start with is, man. Giants baseball. Oh, first start half. There. Oh my God. So I'm sitting on the on the field yesterday. We were out in Fremont and I had a I had a baseball weekend, if you will. My little city team, the twelve U's. We went down to Twin Creeks. Uh we had some great games down in Twin Creeks. And then we played down in Fremont and, and you you know, the pool plays on Saturday and right. then Sunday's kind of single single elimination. And so we're playing uh, Richie Rich from Livermore's uh, team. Shout out Richie Rich. A great guy. We're not talking about Richie the Rich, the rapper, right? No, 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 no. No, no, not Richie Rich. No, he's a caller. He listens oh, to the station okay, a lot. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. A, no, I know who Richie Rich is. I believe he's a um, garbage truck driver. That's what he kept saying. Anyway, long story short, his son is excellent. His team is very good. Fun team. And we played them neck and neck two days, and, and they got the best of us. But we're sitting there, and we're talking about the Giants. And he says to me, he goes, you know, it sucks. I love baseball, clearly. And I'm like, I... Yeah, I mean, you're out here, you know, in the middle of a 100-degree heat, and we're coaching baseball. And his kid obviously loves baseball. His older son loves baseball. They just went to Cooperstown. He's giving me all these stories. He goes, it's hard for me to get my own son to like the Giants when the Dodgers have this guy, and the Astros have that guy, and the Phillies have that guy, and the Yankees have that guy. And clearly, they are a baseball family. Baseball family. And look, the Giants first half, we can talk about it. And I've got right. grades and things like that. And I've I've got some players that I've identified. But and, and I'm listening. It's, like, it's not an abject failure. It's not a disaster. They're just very meaty yoker. Blah. And it feels like in Blah. today's society, and look, well, there's a lot of things going on in society. We we'll obviously want a more yeah. safe community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, well, like, you know, I don't want to get polo, uh, you know, no, no, political no, 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 in any way, but lot, like, we know, all want the same thing. Safe know, society. I, yeah, no, safe society. You only, I'm not even going to go down this road, but I read about something. A three-year-old baby went missing it's, and is dead. In Fremont, California. It's, I read about that on, I was watching NBC News Bay Area. And I was just like, there's all kind of stuff going on. But keep going. spend too much time, and on real quick on this. I think as a, as a, as a community, country, we spend too much time right. arguing on the fringes when the majority of us just want safe communities yeah, for our kids. No you know, good schools. You know, we don't want to get taxed through the roof. Like, it, we all agree on a lot of the right. same things. So anyway. That being said, by the way, I'm so jealous of Stiney Guru having this slot. It feels great right now. It feels like we're flying. It's only been seven minutes. Oh, they're jealous too. Don't worry if you guys are having this shift. I'm already hearing about it in Why? the other group. Then. Why? Oh, they're not happy. Two to six. Well, they're fired up, of course, because we're jacked up all week long. So we're excited here at 95. <laughs> well, so the game brought to you by Jacks. Jacks but they're just a little jelly, of course. They'll get right. used to it. They'll we'll get used to everyone. I, this slot. I, mean, I used to on. do this slot all the time. So I'm this watching the Giants. Right, ahead, and and I'm watching the Giants, and I'm driving in this morning. And boy, it was a change of pace not listening to, you know, uh, what's the guy? Brady Quinn talk first thing in the morning, or me listening to a podcast. I turn on Willard and Dibbs, and, and they're talking about just the team. And, and I, I would agree. It's, it's not some abject failure, but the worst place to be in sports. When time is the ultimate Whoa. currency, time, my time, I could watch the receiver doc. I could watch the CONCACAF. I could watch. Oh, don't you go there with soccer. Just, just don't, you, don't go there with soccer. Hear me out. Don't I could go watch there with the soccer. New York Giants, Hard Knocks, which I think is the best Hard Knocks yeah, in the last yeah. 10 years. We could watch House of Dragons. My time is my new currency. I am coaching. I've got my wife. I've got dinners. I've got family stuff. If you can't grab my attention, you're not worth my time. And so I'm looking at the Giants right now, and I'm saying, like, they've got to realize. And I and they could tell me, Joe, attendance is up. Sure. I don't think this organization currently understands that currency of the modern consumer is time. Okay. And you don't have enough players I want to invest time into. So it sounds like a conversation we've had about 15 times the last, or actually 15 times three, the last three years. Basically, what you're telling me is that they're boring. A kid can't grab on to a player. You have nobody to grab on to. Is Patrick Bailey that guy? Is Elliot Ramos that guy? I've, we shall see. I think Ramos we is a great see. step He's forward. He's a great story. Great story. Bailey, I like the way Bailey plays. Chapman plays hard, but it's the same exact conversation that we've had the last three years with the San Francisco Giants. So they're 47 and 50, the definition of mediocre. Mm -hmm. So I threw out on Twitter yesterday, yeah. hey, Giants fans, I want to have a constructive just conversation, yeah. you know, without being name called, but you know, that doesn't happen on Twitter. Well, Somebody's just... always got to call you something. <laughs> uh, they got to try to try to hit me up and get you canceled or whatnot. But the Giants are just a mediocre team, so I asked for a grade. And we could go down to players or whatnot. And I just said, 
it's a C minus first half. It's just, and I'm probably being kind. There's a lot of hardcore Giants fans that say no D minus D plus D minus. You know, and there's a lot of people who will say that. But I'm trying to be objective about them and saying to myself, boy, they come out of the gate. And this is why Farhan saying what he said. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, it was a motivational ploy to get the Giants to try to play hard. They did win two or three against the Twins. Now, we don't like how Duvall blew the save and we'll get to him. We don't like how certain things, but Blake Snell, 12 innings pitch, like two hits he's given up. He looked, I, I'm telling he looked you, amazing. You guys want to buy stock into Blake Snell? Well, I still got stock for sale. There's room on the bandwagon. There's room on the bandwagon. But it's the same conversation we've had for many, many years. And so for that star, you want to talk about time yeah, being yeah. currency or whatnot, and to get that star, it's gonna be it's gonna have to be a homegrown talent. No doubt. They're gonna have to go the direction of the Warriors when the Warriors were struggling for so long. And all of a sudden Stephen Curry, who right now is playing in Abu Dhabi, yeah. became that homegrown star. Yeah. Draymond became a homegrown star. Klay Thompson became a homegrown star. For the Giants to get that superstar, it's obvious they can't go out there in free agency and compete with the big boys and sign these guys with big money contracts. So you gotta you gotta develop. And that's where the time is going away. That's where the time is ticking for Farhan Zaidi. Who are you developing? Who's going to be that star next? Eldridge, I get it. He may be a year and a half away, but you got to develop a star if you want a superstar in this market to get the kids, as you say, with Richie Rich and company yeah. to say, yeah, we're going to go to the game to watch that guy because that ain't going to happen in free no. agency. Hey, you're, you're 100% correct. And here is a, a text from Sam Lubman. The Giants are 207 and 214 since the start of 2022. Wow. That is a picture of... Of mediocrity. Oh, wow. It sounds like the Atlanta Hawks of the 90s. It does. <laughs> it sounds like well, and, is... and so you're part about the homegrown talent. So like, I, I, we can get into Ramos. Like, Ramos in only 60 games has 70 hits, right. a 298 batting average, leads the team in home runs and in RBIs. He, he's at an 888 uh, OPS. He's been awesome. But, but Bonte, I look up. Now, part of this is qualified at bats. Some of these guys don't have enough qualified at bats. Whole nother organizational conversation. Let me give you the team leaders. Matt Chapman, qualified at bats, 235. Ramos, 14 homers. Ramos, 46 RBIs. Chapman, nine stolen bases. Chapman, 63 RBIs. Chapman, 319 OBP. Chapman, 84 hits. Chapman, 24 doubles. Yes, five triples. So where, Chapman, where do they rank it? Hold on, hold on, hold on, slow down, slow down for a second. Chapman, where does he rank with all these numbers? This is the team leader. This is the team leader. Okay, team leader. gotcha, gotcha, Bonte, gotcha. this gotcha. is a guy they signed on a one-year deal. Gotcha. This guy they signed on a one year deal. Yeah. He showed up and leads them in one, two, three, four, five, well, six, seven, eight, well, nine different statistical categories. Well, just, let's just look at the team. Twenty fourth in the major league in the majors in home runs, fifteenth in the majors in runs, eighteenth in the majors in hits, fourteenth in the majors in RBI, fourteenth in the majors in average, which right I'm actually surprised at. But twelfth in OBP, seventeenth in slugging. 15th in on-base percentage. And then when you look at the pitching, which to me has been the biggest disappointment Agreed. of the season so far. 23rd in the team ERA, 4.41. 27th in saves. They don't have a lot of save opportunities, right? 26th in whip, walks, hits, innings per pitch, 135, 1.35. And then 28th in opposing batting average. Op opponents are batting 260 against the Giants pitching. So if there's anything... 30 I'm, points higher right, than the right, guy who's leading the team and qualified uh, at bats. This, 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 this lineup, they're as good as I thought they would be. You know what I'm saying? Considering the names in this lineup, there's no real sluggers. Solaire's been a disappointment for the most part in the first half. Thank God for Ramos and thank God for injuries. By the way, anybody who was stunting on Austin Slater a couple weeks ago saying, oh, aren't you guys happy that Austin Slater's in the lineup? No, 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 no. He's gone to Cincinnati. But the pitching has been horrible. The pitching has been the biggest disappointment. And that's part of Blake Snell. That's part of Camilo Duvall. That's part of his bullpen. And I don't know how you overcome that in the second half of the season. Well, if you're going by the eyeball test, and I know there's got a couple of blown saves, and we can look at whip and, and ERA and all those things. To me, this is just my eye. Camilo's been off all year. And for me, it's it's command with his cutter fastball. He doesn't trust the slider. This is a guy who's going out there and on pitch to pitch, I'm not sure he knows what he hangs his hat on currently. Yeah, you throw really hard, okay? But can you throw accurately? Yeah. You know, one of my favorite quotes of all time, Bill Lasky, who obviously works the other station, but I've done some coaching with him at times. You know oh, what he I says? Bill Lasky. He goes, I don't care if you throw 110. If it's ball one, it's ball one. It's ball one. And it's such a great simplistic quote. Yep. Like, so many guys throw super hard now. Yep. Can you control it? And and I'm looking at someone like Camilo Duvall, and I don't understand right now. 
I don't understand what is his bread and butter as a pitcher. Like Blake Snell, for example, when he's rolling, he oh. is painting corners, oh. and he can throw four different oh. pitches, and he can put you away with any of them. He could start with four different pitches, and on a 2-0 count, he could throw any of them for a gots-to-have-it strike. You love his Snell, huh? You well, buy no, the stock? That, you that, love his Snell, right? Fonte, that was by far hey, his best hey, start yeah, of the no year. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. But since he's come, he's come back, he was incredible. 12 innings pitched. He's only given up two hits. And he's only walked three Look, batters. I'm an equal opportunist. Don't sell Snell. When you pitch well, I'm going to give you credit. You know what I mean? Duvall, I think there's been three or four outings of the 21 save opportunities. I would right. deem excellent right. Duvall, Duvall in. 